Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Today we're gonna to have a look at my Voron 2.4. We're gonna discuss why I went with a Voron in 2024, and we're gonna have a look at some of the upgrades that I've added and recommend. So I got into 3D printing last year and very quickly found myself wanting an upgrade from my cheap bed slingers. Based on my experience with those bed slingers, my requirements for the upgrade were as follows. I wanted a Core XY machine that ran Clipper and was open source. The three printers that really stuck out to me that met those requirements were the VZBots, the Rat Rigs, and the Volbots. What wasn't to like about the V2.4? Core XY, linear rails, a stationary bed, an enclosed printer, massive community, and an active Discord. I felt confident in my decision, and I decided to pull the trigger on a V2.4 350 millimeter kit from FormBot. So overall, it took about three weeks to assemble and configure the machine in its stock configuration. If you're currently considering a FormBot kit for your next Voron build, I highly recommend them to anyone who's on a budget, but still wants a solid machine. It completed its first print December 19th and has accumulated 1100 hours since. Now I was happy with the performance stock, but as one does, I tinkered and over the last few months, I've added a bunch of upgrades. Let's have a look at them. Starting at the front of the machine, we have the Vitritech HDMI 5. I went with a different housing than the stock configuration because I didn't like the beefy 90 degree connectors that went through the front of the skirts to the electronics compartment. This one is much sleeker and has internally routed ribbon cables. Above that, we have what is known as the filter. And what it is, is it's a mod that places 45015 blower fans through charcoal canisters. As you can see, charcoal filled, slot snapped together. They use magnetic WAGO connectors that snap in underneath the bed making the connection and what this allows is removing the smell when printing toxic chemicals and also heats the chamber in 24 minutes compared to the 48 minutes the nevermore v6 took and the hour that no bed fans took moving up to the gantry you'll see that there are no x y end stop switches the printer uses sensorless homing the X and Y and tap for the Z and SB2209 CAN bus board uh, routed to the rear A motor mount at the back a Z chain relocate putting it underneath the gantry rather than in front and upwards both of the Y extrusions as well as the X extrusion have uh, titanium gantry packers. Anywhere a cable passes through a 2020 extrusion, I have stealth profile cable covers, and each of the corners have a cable pass through. The CAN bus cable is supported via two clips that connect it to the PTFE. The PTFE is supported by an arm that is bolted to the top extrusion here. It originally did not work very well as the, the bolt went directly into the plastic, but I used a longer bolt with a nylock nut and an M5 shim on each side to prevent the plastic from scraping and really allowing the arm to move with the tool head. At the top center, opposite to the PTFE support arm, there is also a Logitech C920X. I highly recommend adding a webcam to your Voron, just not this one. <laughs> Logitech cameras are expensive with cheap internals and don't play nice with Crow's Nest or Clipper. There's also two Disco on a Stick XXL RGB strips mounted in these carriers with diffusers at the top left and top right. All of the cabling for those goes through these handy corner cable covers that fit behind the Z idlers. The back of the printer, I replaced the stock spool holder with a 608 bearing holder. And I also added a PTFE threaded holder to prevent it from slipping out like the stock one does. I also found a nice quality of life mod to be 
the removable door hinges. They're a bit tricky to line up, but once they do, they snap into place and magnet shut. Easy removal of the doors whenever I don't want them in the way. Easy attachment of the doors or when I want to put something that requires the chamber to be heated without worrying about them falling off like the stock ones do because of the BHB tape. Other panels on the printer use the quick release snap latches. To secure themselves in place, applying a good amount of pressure on the foam. They're also very easy to pop off when I want the panels removed. Top of the printer, you'll also notice the X handles that allow me to really move this 70 pound beast around a lot easier when I need to work on it or under it. I also have the rock and rollers on this machine, which in combination with the X handles, allow me to tip the machine back to access the electronics without worrying about all the stuff on the back panel, like the exhaust and the spool holder. The bottom panel is also magnetic. If I had to remove six screws every time I wanted to access my electronics, I would probably avoid doing so as often as possible. Like with most projects, there were delays and speed bumps and hiccups along the way, so I didn't get to implement all of the mods in time for this video but I'm hoping to have all of these implemented as part of the next video. So at the bottom right, we have the Big Tree Tech SFS 2.0 smart filament sensor. We have a servo powered nozzle brush. We have the beefy front idlers with the sink gears. We have a pin modded XY joint and AB motor mounts. We have the beefy Z idlers. We have stealth profile covers to prevent plastic from building up in the bottom extrusions near the bed, just from prints and whatnot. We have the GE5C mod for the Z-Blocks. We have a 5015 blower stepper driver cooler, an SSR heatsink, rear panel cable channels, uh, new rain dew uh, bearings for the Z-Drives as well as anywhere in the gantry. We have a Vitali knockoff CNC tap, as well as a new cable chain going in. It's a little beefier. I've gone through three or four different versions to try to find one that can meet the angle that is required. For those of you who've made it to the end of the video, thank you for sticking around. If you enjoyed the content of the vibe, feel free to drop a like. If you have suggestions on things I could change or things you'd like to see in future videos, feel free to drop a comment and if you'd like to subscribe, you can catch me in the next one. Thanks.